Hi and welcome to the next tutorial. Today we'll be looking at how to create a simple website using Adobe Animate. So this is what it looks like and we're going to start off here by clicking File New and creating a new document. We're going to pick 1024 by 768 as our resolution and we're going to get started. The first thing you need to do is you need to have three different layers. You need to have a backgrounds layer, a buttons layer and a content layer. Then we can go into our library and we can make sure that we dump all of our assets into our library. And so this will enable us to have all of our assets, you know, ready at hand, just so that we can uh, drag them all in. You need to make sure that you are on the background layer. And once you are on the background layer, you can start to drag your assets in. So, so far, all I've put in is a background and I've put that um, as my uh, bottom section of uh, the background. And then I've put in two PNGs. Now, if you get a white um, box around any of these pictures, it means that you haven't um, downloaded them correctly. So make sure that you get some PNGs. The next thing that I'm doing here is I'm just you know, setting up some uh, rulers to give us a small guide so that I know where to put certain items on the stage. Now to add the rulers, you need to go into view rulers and then you can just click and drag and make as many rulers as you want. Now you need to be careful. You need to make sure that you are on the buttons layer and now we are creating our buttons. So to create the buttons, we're using a special type of rectangle tool and I'm adding a small stroke to the rectangle and that stroke is only it's uh, you know, size two. Then I've added some text. Now I'm going to change the color of the text to black so that it sits well with the, uh, the white of the bottom. Now I'm, I'm expanding the box of the text just so that when I do the middle justification, um, it just sits nicely in the middle. You really need to make sure that you are on the buttons layer. If you are on the background layer, you know, it's not going to work that well. So once I've done one button and I'm happy with the size of the button, if you need to resize, you can always go back and grab the free transform tool. But once you're happy with it, you then can duplicate the button uh, a number of times. So all I did is I, I highlighted and I made sure that I highlighted the text and the actual button. And then I um, just pressed control C to copy and control V to paste. Once I've got all my four buttons in there, I'm, I'm then going to rename all of the buttons uh, to what the links are. So this is where a little bit of planning beforehand um, and knowing what the links are going to be called would be helpful. Once the buttons are finished, I then need to work on the content layer. Now the content layer, I'm going to start off by drawing a space for the content. And this is just going to be a uh, another rectangle um, that we use the rectangle tool for. If you want to make it curved, you need to grab the second selection tool and then you can go and fine tune the curves in the same way that you did the buttons. So I've just lowered the opacity of that um, white rectangle to something a little bit, not full opacity. So I've dropped it down a little bit so it looks a little bit see-through. I also added a stroke to it as well. I need to really make sure that I am on the content layer because if you put things on the wrong layers, it's just not going to work. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to grab some text which will act as the header for each of the small pages. I'm going to increase the font size and I'm going to keep this consistent to all of my other pages. But I'm just working on the first page for now because we have to do um, a few things with the frames and, um, and action scripts and things like that. So I've now expanded the text to go the entire length of that frame. And so every time when I type, I make sure that middle justify is on and that will always give me a uh, centered text to the size of that frame. I can always use my keyboard to press up and down to, um, to actually fine tune and move the text. So uh, I just went back into my assets, um, into my library and I just grabbed uh, whatever picture I had and I've also put that down into my, um, onto my stage. Now, <clears throat> the next thing that you must do is you must add frames. 
So at different parts of um, the content area, you have to make sure that you are pressing insert blank keyframe. So this will occur at frames 10, 20 and 30. The background and the buttons layout will go all the way to frame 40. And all I did is I just pressed insert frame. All right, so you really have to make sure that these things uh, work because without this, your whole tutorial, it just it won't, it won't work. So at every point on every, you know, um, set of new frames, like for example, 20 or frame 30, I pressed and I, I held on my keyboard shift, control and V. And this will mean that I will paste in place. So I had to copy the white background from the first layer and then duplicate it four times for each of the frames, frames 10, uh, 20 and 30. And so now I'm just working on the gallery page and um, I'm just inserting my um, assets in. If I need to fine tune any of the pictures, I can go into the properties and then I can actually type them. So it's always good to be consistent to make sure that um, you are dealing with uh, the right sizes so that things look consistent on your um, actual stage. So once I'm happy with that, I'm going to repeat the process again. I'm going to grab the header and the actual content frame and I'm going to paste in place so that it looks like it's in the exact same spot as the, uh, the rest of them. If you get this wrong, then everything is going to look like it's moving around and it's not gonna really have a good look. So it's very easy to just drop and drag pictures in there. If you need to resize, you can always use the free transform tool. And once you are happy with all of the, the content items, we then have to work on the action script. So to create the action script, what you need to do is every one of those frames, so 10, 20, 30, all right, we need to put some code in. So we have to go to Windows Actions and we also have to open up our code snippets. The code snippets that we want to do is we want to look in the HTML5 canvas. The first code snippet is going to be stop at this frame. So if we preview this by pressing Control Enter, we would only have to stop at frame one. Another thing that we have to do is we have to make sure that we, um, we convert all of our buttons to an actual button. So to do this, what you need to do is you need to highlight both the text and the rectangle, then press F8 and then convert it to a button. Once you've done that, we then need to go and click um, stop at frame. Now the frames that we want to stop at, so um, it says go to frame and stop. We need to make sure that the home button will go to frame one and stop. The about button will go to frame 10 and stop. The gallery button will go to frame uh, 20 and stop. And the final button, actors, will go to frame uh, 30 and stop. So you really need to make sure that you write all the correct frames because otherwise it will not work. And if you stuff up any of those things, you can always go back into your action script to make sure that it works. Once you preview that by pressing Control Enter, you can now go and test and see if your website is actually working. Anyways guys, that's a lot of stuff for today and it's really quite easy to do but um, thanks for watching this video and I hope you learned something and I'll see you next time.